Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and I was on a call earlier today with both Maestrieth and RaptorX, and Maestrieth was, I asked him to demonstrate some of the stuff he's doing in C-sharp. He's been, he's not happy with some of the stuff, the GUIs he can do with AutoHockey, so he's been learning C-sharp and got a run through what he's been up to, and it's quite impressive, pretty amazing. So if you're interested in picking up any of this and learning, so of course Maestrieth is the you know developer that works with me a lot, and then he also created AutoHockey Studio, which is written in AutoHockey. So anyway, it was really interesting to see how he's using C Sharp with XAML, XAML, uh, in order to create some GUIs and stuff and how flexible it is. I was fascinated, so I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. So WPF.NET Framework, we're good there. We're going to name it. I'm going to call it some bullshit that I did today. Creates the project. Yep. And of course, Zoom is killing my performance, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Why do I have two? Uh, who cares? So you're using you're using um, not VS. Uh, yeah, you're using v, Visual Studio itself, yeah. not not VS Code. No. Exactly. Yeah. No, but Visual Studio for C Sharp is amazingly good. Oh yeah, it's great. All right, so let's say I want to run it, and it should pop up a little GUI, pretty blank. That's about 450 by 800, yeah, roughly. ish do, 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 do. Boop. there's my little gooey yep and it's going to pop up wherever it feels like because it's just a pain <laughs> yes that way because we didn't tell it where to go yeah so there's two ways to do that you can do it in the xaml file xaml which is basically just a bastard version of xml that you can throw stuff into it, or you can do it here. This is actually a little more fun. So left equals, I don't know, um, let's go 800. And then, yeah, I gotta close it. Top 800, come on, you bastard. Sorry, my typing is horrible today for some reason. So now when you run it, It'll be it at a consistent be. space. Yeah. Which is apparently way too far down because the top is too yeah, 1080 yeah. P monitor. So let's go 400. That should be about center, maybe a little low, but oh yeah, got to reload it, not run it. Dummy. So that's about center ish. Now I have zero. Things you always forget. This isn't necessarily a navigation view. No. Ah, there we go. Main screen size. So this gets the, the size of the screen and puts it into our rect, rectangle. Okay, yeah. I know. So we go win dot uh, up and width. Yeah, okay. Divided by two minus uh, the divided by two. Yep. And then when height, height divided by two. That's the center of the thing. Height. Oh, you bastard. H E I G H C divided by two. So now this will center it dead center. Oh, yeah, you gotta yep. hit the right button, dickhead. All right. So now we've got it dead center yep. every time it's going to pop up in the middle. So not quite as easy as what Auto Hotkey does it, but not difficult. So clear, yeah. Oh, because Auto Hotkey already, yeah, because Auto Hotkey already does that for you. In 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 in, in C sharp, you in, in the the language does nothing for you. You have to do everything yourself. That's what's yep. going on. Yeah. <laughs> so now yeah. let's go ahead and throw in a button. Now this is where. I think it's a little easier than auto hotkey, but your mileage may vary. So right now you could name it so that you could affect it later. Well, let's go ahead and name it um, my button, but click. This is the fun one. So my, you have a handler now. 
That would be a function that gets called or yep. handler. Yeah. And the fun thing is, is there's a hotkey. You hit it. It, create, it, it, creates it creates the code for you. Yeah, exactly. I know. VS Code has the same. The only thing is that it, it, you have to configure it. So now I click the button. It's going to say nice. Yeah. Uh-oh. I forgot to give it a... <laughs> Notice that it's huge. It's, it's, it's a big. <laughs> yes, the whole. The, it, it takes up the whole. Oh, that's. The uh, whole. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's so cool. Saml, just, just so, so you understand, uh, XML is just a basic language. HTML is a version of XML. Right, right. Which is for hypertext. It has to do only with hypertext, and. Um, there are other versions of it. SAML is an XML version, but just for applications. It's kind of like an HTML, but just for applications. And the things that you can type on it are, for example, the width, name, and stuff like that. But it's like an HTML file. It's the same thing. That's the reason why they, they are using it. Because it, in general, for me, sort of structure. Uh, it is... It, it, it is easier to read, but it takes a lot of space. That's the problem with XML, because you have to have this opening and closing brackets all the time, and yep. uh, that's the that's the one issue with XML. That's why people like JSON that much because you don't need those opening and closing brackets and stuff. There it goes. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did was I created grid a uh, grid. Yes, that is something. This is something that I would love if AutoHotKey could do that, which is creating grids of controls, control yep. grids, right? Because that way, is, yeah. Check this shit out. So I got it over here, so we can see it. It's it'll be in the background. So let's say grid row. Let's put it to one. Now it moved down. Yeah. Grid it's, column. It is a zero base. It is a zero based uh, approach, or what? Yeah, it's all zero based. Right, exactly. So if yeah. I need to move it, but yeah, it's, you just it's put live it. changing it. It's not even you're not stopping oh, yeah. it, starting it. Yes. Yeah, and not only that, the other pro the other thing is now if you have if you have several controls and you put them in the same grid number, they are lined up automatically for you because um, they are in the same. Not necessarily. What I would There's ways to do it, and I'll notice that I expanded across two grid areas right so now it's double the width no no but what i mean is like for example if you put you see grid row zero if you put another button on grid row zero it's going to be right next to that one it's going to be in the same row which is basically very uh, now if i put grid row one it would be below it because it is on the next row right and i would assume that the column would be the same that if it is in this column zero would be one place column one would be right next to it. So it is for me, it is kind of like better for but, me to understand where it is. But how do you, where I, maybe I missed it. How did you tell it how many rows there is in total? Right here. With the width Column and height. definition and row definitions. All right, yeah, you have it here. Yeah, there you go. So you have three columns oh, I'm and sorry. three rows, you're not, all of them 200 and 200. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. Right. right. So now if you have a few buttons, now you can actually put a button in one row, another one in another one, and they automatically will line up where, where there should right. be. Right. What I, what that's what I want them understand. to understand. What if you wanted them to one to be a little lower or higher? Oh. Yeah, you well, could, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. yeah, you might upset, ups, offset them. Well, no, you don't even have to offset them. The stack panel is a really neat thing. Because there you go. No, no, but he, what he meant is that, okay, they get aligned automatically, but what if I wanted to offset it a little bit? Like, they, they, they're yeah, not you didn't really want aligned. to be perfectly aligned for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah, the margin here, yeah, there, there's, the, there's the offset right there. Yeah. Again, it, this looks like HTML, because in HTML, you can have different margins, padding, and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Which, which you can actually probably refer to them in here as well. So. And what's nice is now I've got this. I can move it up, move it left, move it Yeah, right. the whole thing, because, yeah, you have the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I'm missing on our hotkey. As if it is a grid, we could move the controls, all of them at so once. Easily, right. Mm -hmm. Which 
makes sense. It, it, it simply makes sense. But the way how we do it when, with Win32 API is not as agreed. That's what happens. That's all. No, so, not at all. So earlier I asked you about running you know, this stuff on people's computers. And here's where I'm getting a little confused. Like, because we also said it has to be compiled. But right now, yeah. You know, so is, is the XAML file like a, a settings file that it's constantly reading? Yeah, it, yep. it, at runtime, okay. it reads the XAML file and yep. does everything it needs to do. But now but you're live the, changing the, the that file, file, it updates. So it, yes. it, because it's updating the XAML file in there, it's, a, it's what they call like a watched value okay. All right. or a watched file. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then as, as I'm updating it, it's updating it in the... Um, in the runtime directly. Yeah, in the runtime itself. Yeah, so, so, so the idea here, and this is the, 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 the point, there is something called runtime, which is a state in which yeah, I, you're... I understand. I know oh, what okay, so, are, so yeah. I... Uh, exactly, in that case. That's what is going on in here, but in Outer Hotkey, you do not have that. Specifically well, I was like that. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah. If you use the debugger, you can, but yeah, it's not yeah. as easy. Right. No, exactly. Yes. Because I can that's inject right. code in the debugger and have it, you know, right. work. Right. Yep. That's right. So, or so break. There is <laughs>Hey, thank you for watching that video. And I don't know if you're aware of it, but we actually do offer services. So if the stuff you're learning here is a bit above you or you just don't have time, reach out to me at joe at v-automator.com and we can talk about how we can help you.